All knowledge is in that kalima, shahadat. Everything is there. Our intention is there. We sing, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. Witnessing, witnessing, to witness that there is no ilah other than Allah, and witnessing that the Prophet wasalam, abduhu wa rasuluhu, his servant and his messenger, witnessing that. So that is our intention. That is a baseline. Because the question that he's asking is, you know, in this dunya, if you go for training or whatever it is that you're doing, they say, set a goal. You have to set a goal. And he's saying, is it the same, similar in tariqat? Of course it is. Those who are not setting goals, they're the ones who are just going up and down like, like grass. When the sun hits, you go up straight. When the s snow hits, you go down. Not even like grass, like what? Like a what? Like a squash. Why do they call it squash? They get squash? Squash? Squash. You know squash? <laughs> <laughs> ah, now we have a problem. Because when we are British, we say squash, he's saying <coughs> squash. Uh, if we say football, he's saying soccer. We say soccer, he says football. Football is. So squash the gourd plant. Uh, gourd. Uh, not God. God. So when the sun hits, it's growing, taking over everywhere. When the coal hits a little bit, it just withers and dies. The believer is like a cypress tree. Cold, standing straight. Hot, standing straight. Ha! Oh! To stand straight, not to change. To commit, not to change. Not to turn your back. This takes uh, strength. You know when you get those spruce trees, those fir trees, eh? those um, juniper, some saying they jodper, jumper, they mixed up. It takes a long time for it to really take off, but once it takes off, whoop, it grows. Sometimes you look, they're saying one year, it grows one foot, you're waiting five years, it grows one foot. But once it hits and then it starts taking off, and then you can't do anything to stop it then it's going to take off really straight, strong. The believer. Everyone has goal and aim. In this dunya, no one has ever saying, especially murids. No one ever say, I'm satisfied. Maybe Bilal, just saying, I'm satisfied. Everyone say, oh, next year I'm going to do this. Uh, don't tell me, oh, I don't care for nothing. Don't say that. They make you even to eat your words. You do, you care. So you're running. You have a target. At least you're going to say, you have families, you have children, your target is by this time, you're going to be like this, this time, this difficulty, some ease is going to come like this. You have that. When people are coming into tariqat and they don't have a goal and aim and objective like that, that's when, after the honeymoon period finish, Oh, who is this person? Oh, I have to pay the bills. Oh, there's no more the passion. And then you're going to say it's the same. So when you come to the Darga, like this, Zikir like this, or bed like this, eating like this, drinking like this. From outside, it looks so humble, right? It looks so humble keeping to yourself. But we know this. Inside, the dragon says, I hate it here. Please, I want to get out. What am I doing here? All of us, we are guilty of that. Not pointing any fingers, but we know that. So take it out. If you have an aim in tariqah, you have an aim in your belief, you must, because the believers today must be better than yesterday, and tomorrow has to be better than today. You think to increase in your iman is just eh, going with the flow like hippie like that. Ah, anything can happen. You think that is what a believer is? Is a prophet like that? Sahabe kiram, they're like that. No, they suffered. And they pushed and they struggled day by day. 
Well, we're struggling. We're not struggling with nothing. We're not suffering with nothing. Yet people are saying our jamaat is very tough. It's not that we're very tough. It's because others are very weak. That's how it is. We never consider ourselves like this or like that. Never. So it doesn't matter if someone curses at us. It doesn't matter if someone praises us. Because we're looking at our shaykh. That's all. So, now, quickly, go, 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 hadi, hadi. Ahmak, ahmak. You see? Setting a goal now. Like that. Uh, I am ahmak, ahmak. Okay? Then you must say, Ugh, I have to get rid of this. Long time, maybe it takes, maybe three months, maybe six months. Maybe I'm saying one year, I have to finish with this. But you have to know, what is this? First, you have to know there is a problem. I'm like an idiot. I'm moving around like that. Why is it like that? First, you have to sit down. Why am I like that? Is it because of this? You have to find out. You will find the answer. If you look, there is an answer. And then you must work towards that answer. So you're going to say, I must listen to this a little bit more. I must listen to this a little bit more. I mustn't listen to this my, myself so much. I must. Then you fix yourself. You're struggling. That is called Jihadul Akbar. You're struggling. People now entering in Tariqat and there's no struggle. What? Jihadul Akbar. Nafsan Akbar. They're coming in. That's why we're seeing so many. They're okay, regular people before they enter Tariqat. Once they enter Tariqat, whoop! Their ego goes through the roof now. Yes? We should not be. Now where is the struggle? What are you struggling with? So now you say, now you must understand your struggles. Now you must say, I have this wrong, I have this wrong, I have this wrong, I have this wrong. I have this, I have this, I have this, I have this. Now I must work towards this. I have this wrong, this issue with this person. When I'm really looking at it, there's no problem there. But I'm making, why I have to behave like that? Why that one is... You stop, after a while you stop blaming others, you must start blaming yourself. This is the first step. You blame yourself. Those who come in and say, I have no problems, that is the biggest problem. Those who come in declaring themselves to be salihin and saints, in the, then that is a problem. Then we've got to spend years convincing you that there is something wrong. If you know, then you can move quickly. You must progress. Because if this is not about pulling you down. This is about pulling you up. So don't think of it that way. But you have to know, okay, I have this. Why am I? Then you are going to look. You're going to be awake. This shows that you must have passion. You must have intelligence. You must have interest. If you don't have any of this in Derga, in Jamaat, but you have it in your work, you have it in your family, check yourself again. You'll never make progress. If you have interest, then you're going to say, ah, look at this one. This one is good like this. Why I cannot be like that? This one makes zikr so good. This one, this one prays so well. This one works so well. This one's so cool. This one like this. Then you're going to see. Why this one has, I don't have. I must work towards that. Not to say, why is this one so stubborn? I'm better than this. This one is so angry. This one is that. This is what majority are doing. They're blaming everything. Everyone. But they're not looking to see. Allah has put a secret to that one too. No. Once you start doing that, then you start working in yourself. You're working. You're struggling. You're lifting yourself up. Inside the Jamaat, you're not coming a tourist. In and out, in and out. Heart gone, energy out there. Nothing, everything out there, you're coming here empty like a dead body. You're not going to gain nothing. You're not going to hear this everywhere. Maybe you pray the best, maybe you make zikr the best, maybe you serve the best, but I'm going to keep reminding you until something kicks in. This is my job. So you must set a target. You must at least know I have these things. Some things you can get rid of pretty easily. Some things it may take years. Some things you're saying, I can never get rid of this. What a dirty creature I am. Some ways is good. Don't think that you are somewhere. 
Well, just because you pray a couple of rakats, you make a couple of Allah and a couple of salawat al sharif, you wear a turban, you wear a cover yourself, you think you are somewhere? Please. Maybe that's good. Then every time your ego gets high, you're going to say, oh, see, that sickness nobody has. You only help, you pull yourself down again. It's checking, you pull yourself down again. That time, it is one of the meanings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are sincere, their wrong deeds. We will forgive, not only we will forgive, we will turn your wrong deeds, it will turn into as if you do something good. You do something wrong, but Allah will turn it to be as if you did something good and reward you for that. This is one of the meanings. But a man has to be awake, he has to be interested, he has to have passion. He has to say, where am I now? How am I doing now? How am I doing this? Am I always stuck? I don't like this one. I haven't spoken to this one in years. Why am I stuck like that? Yeah. If I'm going to die right now, as Rael says, you have five minutes, is that going to be really important to me? So many things are not going to be so important to you. This is why to remember death often is, is very necessary. So many things will not be important to you. Not the pleasures and not the pain. It's not going to be so important to you. Then that time, you're saying, ah, only if I can just escape to my Allah. If only I can just escape to my Prophet والسلام, more and not, all, not let all these things pull me down. And at that time, yes, no matter how much the world is going to put to you, you'll find a way to escape. No matter how heavy it is, you'll find a way to escape. It gets heavy like this, uh, it's pain, but you find a way to, you get refreshment from that. You can carry on. Every day you will carry on. You're not going to get stuck. So yes, you got to look. Some shaykhs they say, some shaykhs they don't say. It is up to us. If we have the answers, we give. And we are giving. Alhamdulillah through the blessings of our shaykh. And some things you can understand right away, some things you can understand later you forget. Some things it will take some time before you really understand it properly. Sometimes people ask me some questions and I say, you're not ready for the answer, wait five years. Five years, ask me the same question, I'll be able to speak, you will understand. <laughs> okay, I said, so I talk. Not accepting, <laughs> I said, okay. One year, two years, three years, four years, five years. I say, remember, something happened. Allah putting certain situations together, something happened. And you know, uh, this question, uh, this, this. I said, oh, isn't that the same answer I gave five years ago? Yeah, but it happens. <laughs> Prophet is saying, the believer is today has to be better than yesterday. Tomorrow must be better than today. Like what Shaykh Andy is saying, it doesn't mean that today you pray five times, tomorrow you're going to pray seven times, next day you're going to pray ten times. It is not that. It is about cleaning up your intention more and looking at your actions and trying to make it to fit more into the intention. The whole point is not to be sleeping, correct? Not to be sleeping. How billions. They wake up without knowing why they wake up. They go to sleep without knowing why they go to sleep. Billions, they are living without knowing why they live. And this Ahir Zaman, so many die without knowing why they die. The believer, before death comes, angel of death comes, at least, at least 40 days before the angel of death comes, you already smell the smell of paradise. There's already signs saying that, get ready, you're going to go to meet your Lord. Today, may Allah not test us with sudden, sudden things, sudden calamities, sudden accidents. Yeah. But man is awake, he's going to know. You cannot be awake by yourself too, it is impossible. You have to be awake by hanging around with people who are awake and to spend time with the people who are awake as Allah is saying, be with the Salihin otherwise it's not going to give you too much benefit 
Yeah, so in this month, the month of Rabi Awal, Ask that one who is a mercy to the universes for help to remove the wrong characteristics from you that is veiling you from Allah. Concentrate on that. Don't concentrate on other things. Don't even concentrate so much on saying, I love you. Every time you say you love, there has to be proof. And if you cannot prove your love, you're called a cheater and a liar and a hypocrite. Don't be so quick to say, I love, I love you, I love you, I love you so much. What are we doing that shows that love? Nothing. So many people, they're saying that and they're inside of this Dajjalic system. How you can say? More we have to say, forgive us, Ya Rasulullah, we failed, forgive us. Oh, Khalifas, we failed, forgive us. We failed. Help us. Make us to at least succeed with ourselves and with those ones who wants to listen to us. Don't make our hearts to be dead to the suffering of the believers of this world. Don't make our hearts to become alive only to the pleasure and the laughing of this world. That's why, oh, if they let me speak, they're going to hear one time and they're going to stop me from speaking forever. Because they're going to say things they're not going to like. Muslims now falling uh, over themselves. Because now every Muslim conference, whatever, they have to have stand-up comedy. Hmm? Comedian. And the Prophet والسلام, is forbidding that. He is forbidding. He says, don't laugh too much. Because laughing makes your heart to become like a stone. Don't laugh too much. But the Prophet said to us, the person who smiles, he laughs, but he says, don't laugh too much. Like today, people laugh for hours. Huh? Hours. Ha 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 ha. Don't you see? Just turn on the television. You don't have to pay money to see one stand up comedian. Turn on the television. You only want to see comedy, comedy, comedy. What happens now? You're so used to laughing, everything you laugh. Good you laugh, bad you laugh. Black you laugh, white you laugh. Something, even something that is supposed to make you cry, you see it funny and you laugh. I never hear the Prophet Wasallam saying, laugh, you must laugh. But he said, cry. Cry, he says. Cry a lot. Cry for the sake of Allah. And if you cannot, force yourself to cry. He's even saying that, force yourself to cry. As Shri Effendi is saying, in the old days you see in the masjids, old people praying all the time, but they're sitting hours begging Allah, crying, crying, crying. Now, they don't teach that, of course. They don't teach that. They look down on that. Oh, this man, he has no ilm. Ilm. He has no ilm. He doesn't know nothing. He's just sitting there. We have to know all these things. We are much better. <laughs> Brad, don't you know in the presence of Allah, you cannot even bring your ilm? You cannot declare yourself anything. Allah is Ya Alim. You want to bring your ilm? What? To challenge him? That's what shaitan did. Challenging Allah's ilm. Allah is saying, make sajda. He's saying, wait, wait, wait a minute. Are you sure? I'm not going to make sajda to this one. I make sajda only to you. If there's anyone who can make sajda, he should make sajda to me. We're not here to learn ilm. We're here to learn adept. In the presence of your Lord, you can only bring adept. Of what? Not the adept of a Lord, but the adept of a servant. He says people don't know. They never teach you how to have adept of a servant. Servant, especially today's 
hipster kind of culture. Ser- servant? Astaghfirullah. I ain't no one servant. I'm going to say. No? Huh. Wrong. Wrong. Doesn't matter if the whole world disagrees with us, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if majority of people, Muslims, don't agree with us, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if majority of tariqats don't agree with us, it doesn't matter. As Allah says, my servants, the real ones, <laughs> the grateful ones, they are the very few. So we want to be the very few. We have always been very few. It's enough. It's okay. So, in this month, don't go crazy so much with the maulid and all of this. <laughs> now they're going to call me a Wahhabi. Don't go crazy so much. Oh, by the way, uh, <laughs> while people are going crazy for maulids, which is mashallah, it's better than nothing. Well, it's better than celebrating um, Halloween, right? But mashallah, in the land of the Prophet wasalam, they have big Halloween parades now. Oh, you don't know? This happened for some years. That was an old video. They're showing all these creatures and women coming wearing abaya, men carrying the kafiya, taking pictures, and they have parades of these shaitans. They ban people from maulid, from anything else, but they celebrate. What has Arabs got to do with Halloween? Huh? Yani. <laughs> Terrible stuff. But they celebrate because they're jealous. Allah, Allah, what an idiot. They have Halloween parades. And all these women wearing black, and all these men wearing, and they're taking pictures, they sell, they're clapping, and they have all these like crazy on that too. Because we have a lot of Muslims also living in this country. Says, so what? What's wrong? What's wrong with Halloween? I'm American, I'm Muslim, and America, I celebrate Halloween. We say, look, listen, the thing is not so good. They don't listen. It's okay. Or they celebrate this or they celebrate that. Now, even in America, they're going to put a big question mark to celebrating Thanksgiving. Don't you know that? Because the way it's celebrated is wrong, they are saying. But Muslims say, no, I don't celebrate. It's okay. It's not religious. It's okay. Halloween is not religious, too. I don't know. I know in Turkey they're celebrating also, I think. Right? Jadda Bayram. They're saying, uh, how you say which in Arabic? Sahr. Idl Sahr. They're calling it. Yeah? <laughs> you see, it's ridiculous. But in Turkey, that's what they call it. Jad <laughs> Bayram. Which Bayram? And people are celebrating because they get very jealous from the unbelievers. Husband, we have enough holidays. We have enough <laughs> festivities. We have enough. We have enough Urs. We have enough Neulit. We have enough. We don't need this. And even those ones who are celebrating is saying this is ridiculous, we have to stop this too. Themselves, they are saying this is wrong. So, it's turning upside down. Uh, Hold your horses, don't get too excited. The angel of death is right under our pillow when we sleep. And when we wake up, it's right in front of our faces. Try to think of death more often. Because it is a reality. At that time, there will be some protection, inshallah. The man who thinks about death 40 times a day, if he dies, he will die as a martyr. Just by thinking, no ilm, no fiqh, no uh, amal, no ibadah. Nothing special with that, just to know I'm going to die. Reminding himself, 40 days, if he dies, he goes straight to paradise. Yeah, astaghfirullah alazim wa tubulay.
But don't say now to me, yeah, but share. When we look at Halloween, we're reminded of death. Because <laughs> we're very weird people. <laughs> if the man, if the nafs wants it, he will pull out every ayat from every holy book, from every prophet, from every riwayat, from every saint, just to justify it. See? Don't you see? Even shaitan, in the presence of our Lord, he can stand up. And he can disobey. Uh, don't blame shaitan so much. Our ego is worse than that. But these days, it's so difficult. We say to someone sometimes, your ego is worse than that. Astaghfirullah. They get very upset with me because I say it. I'm not worse than that. What can we say? Good luck to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Yalla. Pass go. Don't collect 200. Go straight to jail. <laughs> May Allah protect us, inshallah. May Allah forgive us. May Allah make us to be sincere. May Allah make us to be around sincere people. May Allah forgive all our weaknesses. May our Shaykh and the Holy Ones, their feet always be on our necks. May we be strong in the way of Haq to live and to die for it. Al Fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum.